Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today. I am your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick. In our today's session, we will be looking at advanced public finance and taxation, section 6 unit. And the main topic of concern, I want us to talk about taxation of cross-border activities. And we are going to handle this concept using this question which was just tested recently. That is May 2021, question number 3, part C. We are going to handle this concept using this question which was tested in May 2021, question number 3, part C. I know those students who did the exams in May and they had attended our class for advanced public finance and taxation. Wherever they are now, I know they are just smiling. I know they are just smiling and they know the reason why they are smiling. I won't disclose it in this class, but wherever they are right now, I know they are just smiling. So it's also upon you to take that point and chance to join these classes, to join these classes. You'll also be smiling as at the end of each paper that you'll be doing. So, looking at uh, taxation of our cross-border activities, my good students, what's the whole concept behind it? The whole concept behind it, we just want to look at areas whereby these uh, maybe individuals or companies, they are conducting transactions beyond the borders and if they are conducting some various transactions beyond the border you'll find that they are going to earn income and this income has to be taxed and when taxing this income you'll find that i'll be having two scenarios right the first scenario is that i'm earning an income outside kenya the other scenario will be on this income if you are a kenyan citizen that income is assumed to have been earned in, in Kenya. So, Kenya government will demand its portion of tax. And also in the other country where you've earned that income, because you've earned that income in that country, also that country will demand a portion of its tax on that income that you've earned. So, you'll find that it's as if I'm looking at what? The concept of two countries taxing that citizen on the same income. And that is why we normally tend to talk about the concept of double taxation agreement. That is where this component known as DTR will come in. That's why this concept known as double taxation agreement will kick in. Double taxation agreement or TT. That's why this concept of double taxation agreement will kick in. Commonly known as what? DTR commonly known as DTR. That's why that aspect will kick in. So the question will be, what is this double taxation agreement? I know you've already done this video, but ideally for those who are new, we are starting it from scratch. So a person will ask, what is this double taxation agreement? Double taxation agreement, my good students, what you should mark is an agreement between Kenya and another country. Mark, very, mark that very well, you're saying this is an agreement between Kenya and that other country where they will agree on some certain terms in that if I am a citizen of Kenya and I've earned an income in, say, Uganda or I've earned an income in South Africa, the agreement that we are going to come uh, or to make between these countries will be this income that you've earned, as much as supposed to be taxed in South Africa and also to be taxed in Kenya, what about on this side of the uh, taxpayer? In this case, it should be kind of granted a relief. A relief in a manner that instead of me paying, say, like uh, 20000 as tax on either country, I'm going to pay, say, like 15000 Instead of me paying, say, like 10000 I'm going to pay 8000 so you'll find that with this agreement is going to cover, is going to enable, is going to assist this taxpayer to save in terms of income that was supposed to be paid as tax, but in this time is saving. 
You also find that it's going to encourage me as a taxpayer to go to South Africa to do businesses because I know very well that I am going to be given a relief. So you'll find that this agreement ideally will come in with a lot of benefits. If you go to the video that we did when we introduced the double taxation agreement, we've clearly stated the whole idea and the whole concept of double taxation agreement. Then, in that case, you've heard us talking about the concept of double taxation relief. Also very common uh, concept here, double taxation relief. Double taxation relief. We've said we're just doing a review because you already have this video. Double taxation relief. Commonly known as what? Uh, this is a DTA. Uh, this is a DTR. Double taxation relief. When it comes to double taxation relief, remember, I gave you guys some steps. In our first video, we had looked at some steps on how we will arrive at double taxation relief. But ideally, how will we achieve this double taxation relief? We normally tend to compare the two. And what you normally tend to compare is the, uh, this is a foreign tax on foreign income. I'll be comparing the two foreign tax on foreign income. Foreign tax on foreign income. I'll be comparing that with Kenyan tax. I'll be comparing that with Kenyan tax on foreign income. I'll be comparing that with a, for, a Kenyan tax on foreign income. So in this case, whichever is lower is the one that you are going to take as what? As double taxation relief. Whichever is lower is the one that we are going to take as double taxation relief. So this is what we had talked about. This is what we had talked about in our previous classes. So today, I want us to go straight to this question. May 2021, 20, question number three, part C. We are going to remind ourselves of the steps that we are supposed to follow while working out such questions. Kindly go through the video for double taxation agreement very well, the one that we had introduced that concept and we looked at it deeply. I'll also want you to go through some of the main components. Even before I arrived here, there are some of the main elements that we had talked about in regard to double taxation relief. But the key element for under this case, we mentioned that for us to identify double taxation relief, I'm going to compare the two. That is foreign tax on foreign income and Kenya tax on foreign income. So straight, I want us to go through this question. I want us to go through this question of ours, which was attested in May 2021. That's the beauty part of us. We've already started our classes. So kindly, if you've not joined, make sure that you've joined. So, this is a question that I want us to look. Remember, we've already looked at uh, the concept of VAT. That was a part B of the question where we were asked total input, total output tax, deductible input tax, value added tax. Already, we had looked at that. We have already talked. We, had, we did that in our video when we were looking at uh, these questions for VAT. So, going through that question, my good students, going through that question, this is what we are told in question number in question number three, part C, believing that you can see what I've shared on the screen, believing that you can see what I've shared on the screen, that is a paper which was tested in May 2021, question number three, part C. This is what you are told. Ali Salama is a resident taxpayer in Kenya. During the year of income 2020, he had 4,380,000 from employment in Kenya. He had also received 480,000 from the United Kingdom, which has a double taxation relief treaty with Kenya. They have this agreement, right? Tax deducted in UK was equivalent to 80,000 shillings, was equivalent to 80 thousand shillings that was a tax deducted in uk that was a tax deducted in uk so the moment i've seen that my good student the 
first thing that you need to ask yourself is do you still remember what we had talked about in our previous classes that's the first thing that you need to ask yourself that's the first thing that you need to ask yourself and uh, in that case this is what you are going to look at this is what you are going to look at So kindly take a screenshot for those, who, for those who haven't taken a screenshot. Kindly take a screenshot of that question. Kindly take a screenshot of that. Go through that question, my good students. Where are we going to start from? Where are we going to start from? Where are we going to start from? Recall the steps. Step number one, while you are doing your double taxation uh, relief uh, question is, these are the steps that I want us to always have in mind. These are the steps that I want us to always have in mind. Step number one. Step number one. Step number one. Step number one. Step one. What you need to do is what? You need to determine or you need to compute your tax liability on Kenyan income. So you need to compute tax liability on Kenyan income. You need to compute tax liability, tax liability on Kenyan income, tax liability on Kenyan income, tax liability on Kenyan income. This is the first thing that you need to compute, tax liability on Kenyan income. And whenever you're talking of tax liability on Kenyan income, what do we mean? You have first of all to identify your Kenyan income, like in our case. How much was this person earning in Kenya? How much was this person earning in Kenya? If we can check it out clearly, you can see that he was receiving 4,380,000 from employment in Kenya. So this person was receiving so income from Kenya. If you have to talk about income from Kenya, so talk about income from Kenya. So income from Kenya income from Kenya, we can clearly see that this person was receiving a figure of employment income or he received uh, an employment income of 4,380,000. So talk about employment income. Employment income. Employment income, this person was receiving a figure of 4,380,000. So, he didn't have any he didn't have any other income in Kenya he didn't have any other income in Kenya so if this person didn't have any other income in Kenya what would be our tax liability on that so if you are to talk about our tax liability remember in our previous session we noted that this individual graduated tax rate had changed so it was upon us to always uh, or it will always be upon us to recall that new graduated skill rate and the beauty part of this is that you'll always be given in your exams like if we were to use our current skill rate if we were to use our current skill rate which i've just shared in our screen which i've just shared in our screen we are talking of annual, right? So 1 to 288, we have this scale rate. The scale rate that I've just shared on our screen, that is scale rate that you're supposed to use. That's the scale rate that you're supposed to use. So having mentioned that one, we did this summary of the graduated scale rate, which we mentioned that for the first 688,000, if you are to check that scale rate, I'd share that one, believing that we've taken a screenshot. So we are talking of the first 688,000. In this case, if you had it in mind, and remember I gave you a summary in our classes, we, may, we noted that the first 688,000, the tax liability was how much? 98,800. Probably a person will ask Mwalimu, for those of us who never attended your class, how did you arrive at 98,800? This is a shortcut, my good students. Look at this scale rate. 
Look at this scale rate. In our scale rate, we have 1 to 288,000, which you are given 10%, right? Then we have 288,001, 288,001 to 488,000. At this point, we are given a figure of 15%. We have 488,001, 488,001 to 688,000. We are given 20%. Then excess, excess of 688,000. We are given 25%. We are given 25%. We are given 25%, right? So, any person earning up to 688,000, how will you determine that income of this person earning up to 688,000? This is how we are going to do it. 10% of 288, in that case, you can clearly see I should be having, uh, that is uh, 288 by 10%. We should be talking of 28,800. Right? Because you are talking of 10% of 288,000. Then this scale rate of between 288,000 and 1 to 488,000 is subjected at the rate of 15%. Correct? What will be the difference? The difference that I'm going to subject, uh, the, it is the difference I'm going to subject at the rate of 15%, which in this case will be talking of 488 minus 288. The difference you can clearly see is what? 200,000. So it is 200,000, the one that I'm going to subject at what? At the rate of 15%. So take 200,000, my good students, by 0.15. In this case, you're arriving at how much? 30,000, right? We are getting 30,000. What about the other difference? 688 minus 488,000. Again, you can clearly see I'm having 200,000. This case, it is a 200,000. I'm going to subject at the rate of what? 20%. So, talk of 200,000 times 20%. In that case, you can clearly see I'm having how much? 40,000. So, what will be our total tax liability up to 688,000? Up to 688,000, my liability would be 40,000 plus 30,000, correct? Then we add 28,800. 20,000. Uh, 28,800. In this case, you're arriving at how much? 98,800. And that's why we are saying that the first, any person earning an income up to 688,000. That is, the first 688,000, the tax liability is 98,800. That is war. That's how we've arrived at 98,800 using this graduated scale rate. And again, this is just a repeat. This is just a repeat. That's how we've arrived at 98,800. Now, see how you'll have saved your time. If you could have known this, you would have to go all through this. You could have just written the first 688 to 98,800. And you have it. You have it very quick. You have it. You have it very, very quick. You have it very quick. Now, after we've uh, talked about that one, after we've uh, talked about that, Look at excess four million. This person was earning four million three hundred and eighty thousand. Excess we subject this at twenty five percent. So I'll be talking of four million three hundred and eighty thousand with less six eighty eight thousand. We subject the difference at the rate of twenty five percent. To give us 923,000. 923,000. That is what I'll be having there. So the total or tax liability on Kenyan income, I should be talking of 923 plus 98,800. This should give me 1 million 21,800. That is what we should be having. That is what we should be having. That is what we should be. That is what we should be having. That is what we should be having. That is a one million and twenty one thousand eight hundred because you've added the two because you've added because you've added the two because you've added the two. Now, after we are done with that, step number two, my good students. Step number two. Step number two will be to do what? For our step number two, it will be upon us to compute or determine 
tax liability on total income. So step number two here. Step number two, we need to determine tax liability on total income. Tax liability on total income. So talk about tax liability on total income. 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 And how will we achieve our total income? To achieve our total income, already we have income from Kenya. Income from Kenya. Income from Kenya, my good students, we have 4 million. 380,000. What about income from UK? Income from UK. Income from UK. We can clearly see I was given a figure of how much. Let me share the question again. For those who have joined us just right now. The question was here. So income from UK, I can clearly see I was given a figure of how much? 480,000. So I'm going to take 480,000. So, we are going to take 480,000 here. 480,000. So, we can clearly say that our total income will be, our total income will be 4,380. We add 480,000. That should give us a total income of 4,860,000. 4,860,000. Then, from there, what will we do next? We need to determine that tax liability. So what will be your tax liability on total income? So my tax liability on total income, my tax liability should be the first, believing that right now we are good on this, the first 688,000. We should be talking of 98,800. Then top of excess, we should be having 4,860,000. We less 688,000. We multiply by 25%. So that should give us how much, my good student? That should give us how much? In that case, we should be talking of uh, 4,860,000. We less 68,000 times 0.25. That should give us 1,043,000. 1, 1,043,000. So the total plus 98,800, that should give me... 1,141,800. If you can clearly see that. So we have our total, or rather we have tax liability on total income. Uh-huh, uh-huh. How sweet tax is. How sweet tax is, right? Step number three, my good students, step number three, what you're supposed to do in step number three. What you're supposed to do in step number three. So step number three, you need to determine your tax liability or Kenya or rather Kenyan tax on foreign income. You need to determine your Kenyan tax on foreign income. And how will you determine your Kenyan tax on foreign income? Kenyan tax on foreign income. So you're talking of a Kenyan tax, Kenya tax, Kenyan tax, Kenyan tax. On foreign income. Kenyan tax on foreign income. Kenyan tax on foreign income. How will you determine our Kenyan tax on foreign income? To determine our Kenyan tax on foreign income, my good students, this is what you are going to do. We need to get the difference between tax liability on total income, tax liability on Total income minus tax liability on Kenyan income. This should give us Kenyan tax on foreign income. Kenyan tax on foreign income. That should give us Kenyan tax on foreign income. By taking the tax liability on total income in tax, tax liability on Kenyan income. And already we have already determined that one. So here I'll be talking of 1,141,800. 1,141,800. 1,141,800. 
Remember the one that we are determining here, right? We less 1,021,800. So, tax liability on total income minus tax liability on Kenyan income, that should give us Kenyan tax on foreign, on foreign income, which will be a figure of how much? In this case, we'll be talking of minus 1021,800 to give us a figure of 120,000. That should be Kenyan tax on foreign income. Kenyan tax on foreign income. The next step would be what? Because I'm giving you on steps, and that's why Mualimu is trying to go as slowly as he can so that you guys should get this concept very clear. So, step number four, step number four, my good students, will be what? You need now to determine your double taxation relief. You need now to determine your double taxation relief. So double taxation relief. Double taxation relief. How will you determine your double taxation relief? To determine your double taxation relief, my good students, we had said we are going to compare what? We are going to compare, we are going to compare the foreign tax on foreign income. Compare foreign tax on foreign income. On foreign income. We compare that with what? Kenyan tax. We compare that with the Kenyan tax on foreign income. On foreign income. So, Whichever is lower is the one that you are going to take as what? As our double taxation relief. So Kenyan tax on foreign income, we have it to be 120,000. Already, so you are determined at this, uh, we are determining this one at this point, right? What about foreign tax on foreign income? What were you given? Because that one will always be given. And in our case, we are given a figure of 80,000. We are given a figure of 80,000. So the lower of the two is the one that I'm going to take as what? As our double taxation relief, which will be the lower is 80,000. The lower is 80,000. This is 80,000. Sorry for this. This is 80,000. We are talking of 80. This is 80,000. So that is what you are going to take as, that is what you are going to take as our DTR double taxation relief and this is what our examiner wanted us to determine our dtr therefore we should be talking about 80 now after we've computed our dtr and we determine it to be 80000 this was part 1 of the question this was part 1 of the question what about part b my good students what about part b what about part b in part b what were we asked to do in part B, what were we asked to do? Look at this question very well. Part B, we were asked to compute tax payable in Kenya by Mr. Ali Salama. Tax payable in Kenya by Mr. Ali Salama. So, how will you compute our tax payable? So, tax payable, tax payable, tax payable by Mr. Ali Salama in Kenya, by Mr. Ali Salama in Kenya. So the tax payable, this is what we are going to do, my good students, this is what we are going to do. We are going to take, we are going to take our tax liability on total income, tax liability on total income, tax liability on total income, which in this case we have a figure of 1 million, 141,800 being our tax liability on total uh, income. Then we less what? We less personal relief. Personal relief. And you know very well that personal relief during the year 2020, in this case, we be deal with 28,800. After we have our personal relief, we less what? Our DTR. Double taxation relief, which in this case, our DTR, my good student, you can clearly see we had determined it to be how much? 80,000. So we have the 80,000 there. We have the 80,000. So that as at the end of the day, 
what will be our tax payable by Mr. Ali in Kenya. Therefore, our tax payable by Mr. Ali in Kenya, we should be having the following. We should be talking of 1,141,800, we less 28,800, and we less 80,000. So in this case, we can clearly see we have 1,033,000. We can clearly see we have 1,033,000. So we are talking of 1,033,000 being our tax payable by Mr. Ali in Kenya. So this is what you are supposed to do. This is what you are supposed to do in that question. This is what you are supposed to do in that question. So to this juncture, my good students, that's what you are required to do. And as we had mentioned earlier on, those who attended our classes in last semester and during block revision, I know right now they are just smiling wherever they are. And they know the reason why they are smiling. So if you've not joined him the Rasa and you want, you'd wish to join him the Rasa probably, you can always reach us on the number that we provided just below the screen. Or you can email us at info at mdarasa, info at mdarasa, info at mdarasa.co.ke. You can email us at info at mdarasa.co.ke. And we will be there to assist you to enroll to these classes. Our, start, our classes started this week. You are not late to join. You can join these classes anytime. So to this juncture, my good students, thank you so much. And let us meet in our next session. Thank you.